ST 2016. This is interviews, music reviews, and more. This is, this is The Hotter Show. What is up, everybody? We are rolling out of you here today on episode 302 of The Hotter Show. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you so very much for tuning in and clicking that play button on today's episode of the podcast. I got a really, really awesome episode for you here today. I told you every single week right here on The Hotter Show over the last 300 episodes. I am sitting down with my man, Mr. Ev Gallows from Judgment to do a showcase of their brand new EP that just came out about a month ago now as you guys are hearing this define a live and let me tell you it is a incredible listen you guys are going to learn a little bit about the writing and recording process of the ep itself you're going to hear the full ep and then ev and i are going to kind of break break it down song by song and we really get into some nitty-gritty stuff with the lyrics and the meaning behind the songs and ev is such a He's such a great storyteller, and he really transports you back to his mindset when he was writing those songs. And some of these songs are are a few years old, so it was really fun hearing that. You know, two of the songs were brand new songs that you guys have definitely never heard before. The other three songs in the EP were singles that the band's already released, so it was really fun getting to hear him kind of dive into those singles a little bit more, but then also dive into the new songs. Fading is without a doubt my new favorite uh, Judgment song, so big shouts to Evan. The guys, it's always a pleasure to talk, talk with them, so you guys definitely can enjoy this episode. Before we jump in, I need to give a humongous shout out to my man Andy Kalanico from Revive the Rose for coming on last week and all of the Revive the Rose fans, man. It's been really fun. Again, I'm still getting uh, <laughs> getting hit up about that episode. So thank you guys so very much for all of the support. I got some new listeners out of that. So thank you very much to Revive the Rose for uh, for all the support coming on the show. Andy, I very much appreciate it, my brother. And be sure to check out again, Bow Down Fest, September 4th. Do not miss it. It is going to be a hell of a time so big shout out to the guys from revive the rose and andy of course for coming on last week and with that we are going to jump into my chat this harder show music showcase for judgments brand new ep that just came out about a month ago define a live with frontman ev gallows let's get into it all right we got my man ev gallows here from judgment talking all about and doing a hard show music showcase of judgment's brand new ep define alive f what's up brother how are you not much man thanks for having me back on it's a pleasure yeah man always great talking to you i put up a status a couple weeks ago uh i had anytime i have cancellations now i try to like do a last minute podcast thing and you were one of the people that uh, it was a little after so and you were like hey i got something and i was like oh i wonder what the guys are doing then you all dropped an EP and I was like, oh, yep. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, well, that's pretty good. So I was yes, like, man, we got to we got to link up to do something. So, man, it's first and foremost, I love the EP. It is absolutely awesome. And I mean, you know, the three songs, obviously, I was I was familiar with, which was Terra Firma, Define Live and November. But the other two new songs. Thank Fantastic, you, man. Dude. I love them. I love appreciate them. it. We're, it's we're all stoked to have, finally have all of it out we've kind of been sitting on it for a little bit now um we were kind of gonna release it a little bit differently before covid happened and then we kind of had to readjust but uh, honestly it worked out pretty well well that's great so walking obviously like for those who are not familiar with the hall music showcases talk a little bit about the writing recording process of the ep or the album play the full EP or album, and then we'll kind of do a track breakdown of each song. But walk me through kind of like you were just saying, things are maybe going to be a little different. Walk me through the writing and recording process for this EP. I know that from what you were saying, obviously you've kind of been sitting on these songs for a while. So walk me through that a little bit. Yeah. So I think we recorded this back in 2018. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah. So it's been a while actually fading, fading. We recorded, first because we kind of had the idea of dropping it as a single um and we recorded that in 2018 but it was around like maybe may or june um and then we kind of told sam goyana who's the producer of the record out of uh room 21 sound in toronto so um pardon me shout out to them yeah man (laughs) shout out to that sam's a g man he uh did a really good job on the record. Yeah, sounds fantastic. He's doing he's doing big things now. So, um, 
so yeah, we went in the studio and recorded fading. And then he's kind of like, what's the plan for this? And we're like, Oh, we want it to be a single off of like our EP, whatever we're going to mm-hmm. release it. And he's like, well, I think that we should kind of record them all at once because if I record this now and then record the rest of the songs months from now, it could sound a little bit different. Like you recorded it on different days. So we were like totally understandable. So pretty much I think we recorded the vocals that day of fading, but left everything else till the next time, which was later on maybe November of 2018. And um, yeah, so we went in the studio then and it was, it was definitely a cool experience uh, for those of you who don't know, we used to be poor judgment before. Um, and that studio experience was was really cool, but this had more of a more of a professional feel to it. I guess maybe it's just was the studio environment or or what and I, I don't really know what it was. Like I love Mark Shore is the producer of our first record as poor judgment. Um, he's a great uh, producer and he's been doing great things in the country world now. Uh, Robin Ottolini, if you know who she is, I was going to say, I've heard that name before the right. Yeah. So I, I was curious. Yeah. So he, uh, produces her and is also her manager, which I mean, they're doing huge things. She just got signed to Warner, nice. uh, Nashville, which is huge. Um, but yeah, so we did this one with Sam and it was, it was really cool. Um, I don't want to, I'll, I'll just like, I'll leave it at that sort of thing. Um, sure. Because yeah. we'll dive into specifics, I guess, as each the songs track. go Yeah, on. we'll break down each track, but just an overall kind of. Yeah, it was it was definitely a cool experience. Um, Sam's a really cool guy, just uh, amazing producer, but just a genuine guy too. Um, so meeting him and working with him was super cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, the experience was really, really dope. So, yeah. Nice. And as far as with you guys, just because you mentioned it, kind of sitting on the, the EP, was the plan, hey, 2020 is going to be our year, you know, let's drop it? Or was it like, obviously, you guys, like you were saying, you kind of had planned to do it differently. What was just now, just for fun, what was kind of the original plan? For? Yeah. So the original plan was um, so we recorded this in 2018. And uh, I think we were actually still poor judgment at the time. Um, We kept playing shows the following year, 2019. And then at the end of 2019, we ended up changing our name and rebranding to judgment. Um, And that was, yeah, December, 2019. And shortly after that, we planned on um, kind of releasing everything as as singles that year. Um, And kind of, kind of doing the same thing, leaving like, two of the songs, uh, not as singles, just so if when we released the EP, people didn't feel like they were getting, you know, chance or whatever. There was something, at least a couple new songs. Exactly. So yeah, we kept it a, you know, five tracks and um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty much the same plan. It just got pushed to this year kind of I thing so because 2020 was just such a whirlwind for everybody and, and whatnot and we were like how do we release this now because we can't play shows to promote and and you know people aren't going to want to spend money on you know merchandise right now when you know they don't even know kind of, everybody what lost their jobs like, at that yeah. point and it was just a mess so we didn't really know how to go about it so it just took took a little bit of patience and uh so we we dropped one single that first one was terra firma that was like early 2020 i think that was yeah it might have been just like when covid was kind of starting up it was definitely early 2020 because that was when we had i think it was february because that was yeah. when we had our first interview was very early 2020 <laughs> yeah yeah so it might or have very been late just- 2019 somewhere in yeah, the ballpark. It was it was early 2020, I know that for sure, but I maybe it was just before covid happened I think and then we had this happened. conversation the last time. Yeah. <laughs> you were yeah. Wrong. I'm looking it up. I'm just, I just can't remember. <laughs> yeah, but uh and then we released um we released November shortly after which that one we kind of rushed out and again that was just like 
not knowing what to do kind of thing. If people wanted music or they Wanting didn't to want put music. Out, yeah, I get you. Right. So we put out November. And so that was that we didn't really do any uh, major promo for it, which we kind of regret, but this releasing the full EP is kind of, it's kind of having a resurgence now, which is really mm -hmm. cool to see because um, I, you know, obviously I think all our songs are amazing like in my opinion <laughs> but uh november was a just a really cool one and the story behind it's cool and we'll touch on that again oh, after for sure um and then define alive came out this year and originally we we planned to release define all define alive last year and then release the ep like early early this year but again things got pushed and whatever but here we are it's out you can go listen to it now and let us know what you think about it. And yeah, you're going to hear a lot more uh, stories behind each song and stuff. Definitely. And you're going to hear the full EP right now because we are going to just jump into it in its entirety. So I'll give you guys the track list of Define Live, which, by the way, it has a beautiful, uh, beautiful cover. Thanks, man. I, I have to throw that out. I'm a big fan of uh, like album and EP covers and stuff. And I, yeah. I just, I was mesmerized by that when I saw it. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. We cover. can even touch on why I'd we did that to, i'd whenever, love to hear that right now y tell me right now then we'll jump into it because i want to okay. hear it i love it so yeah i mean um the idea we kind we had this idea for for a while um it was different variations of that we had the girl floating in the center for a bit and then we had we got a couple of them back and we're like nah, i don't know it's just not sitting well uh we we ended up changing artists and stuff like that because um the the artists that we uh, previously did it with was just like this is kind of like out of my range sort of thing gotcha. and which is to him. that they said that because yep it's better than just lying <laughs> Being like, oh, yeah of that. course <laughs> like respects to him and mm -hmm. he did um amazing work to mm -hmm. go check him out I, th I think it's delta options I'm pretty sure that's his name on instagram Sorry, does really really cool stuff um but then we ended up going with uh I can't i honestly can't remember her name and i'm so sorry but we found her on fiverr actually which nice. is uh, if you don't know a site where you can just, to fiverr yeah it's a, it's a really great site mm -hmm. um so so the meaning behind it is i kind of had this um idea for a tattoo and it it was kind of like a similar sort of uh idea but it was just different at the same time so i'll just explain it so the idea is and i still probably am going to get this tattoo uh it's like a ship that's sailing in like super rough waters but in the distance the water is more calm and there's sun peeking through the clouds mm -hmm. in the distance so pretty much that means like life can get super hard um and rocky at some points but there's always tomorrow there's always the next day and there's always the future so that's kind of the idea behind the record as well and we wanted to incorporate uh the woman with the rose behind her back walking towards um you know the growth and the distance mm -hmm. and where she is is very um dead and deserted almost um and it pretty much represents the same thing. And the rose uh, obviously represents her own personal growth and looking to the future, even though where she is is so terrible. She's just looking ahead to the future. Looking ahead to brighter days and yeah. looking into the sunset. Yeah, it's yeah, man, that's beautiful. And it's a beautiful cover. And what I'm gonna do, guys, is for you watching the video version on YouTube, I'm gonna actually have the album cover over top of the tracks being played. So if you haven't seen it for some reason, you're going to see it, but uh, man, it's a beautiful album cover and it's a badass album. So I'm excited to get into it. Give you guys the track list. We have Fading, which is the first song, Anxiety and the Fear of. We have Terra Firma, Define Alive, and November. So crank it up. I highly recommend you guys listen to this with headphones if for some reason you're not. That's the best way to fully experience these hard show music showcases. Just sit down, throw on some headphones and enjoy it. It's some banger tracks and some very good, deep, meaningful lyrics and that, which we're going to get into afterwards when we come back with Ev. After you guys hear Define Live in its entirety right here on the Hollywood Music Showcase, enjoy. Behind closed doors 
years There's so much more That you could even imagine Lock and key You'll never see the real me I'll never let it happen
countless opportunities slip through my fingertips, looping through a vicious cycle of worthlessness and discouragement that I will one day rename regret. I hope to stop living in my head and start living through my heart. Cause maybe that way, I can stop living with all the anxiety and the fear of... The number you have dialed has been disconnected. to man the broken pieces of myself I can't restore my fragile heart I wish to leave this can I move on to something more if we won't live forever look at all the sins in there if we won't live forever look at all the I don't wanna be 
Wake up, wake up wake you're up. sleeping. Wake up, wake up you're up. sleeping. Lately, I've been a slave to this darkness. Just trying to figure out what sets me apart. But maybe I'll find that it's brighter. If I embrace who I was at the start With patience wearing thin In places you have been Find comfort in your skin Don't like the path you're walking Then wake up You're sleeping
guys you just heard define a lie the brand new ep from judgment in its entirety and i'll give you guys the track listing one more time in case you missed it the first track that you guys heard was fading then the second track was anxiety and the fear of then the third track was terra firma the fourth track was define a lie and the fifth track was november now again we are joined by vocalist and frontman Ev Gallows of Judgment to uh, do a little a little track by track breakdown here now. So Ev, walk me through each track here. I want to hear all about it, and I'm very very excited because I really really love these songs, man. I really do. All right, man. Well, I guess we'll start from the top with fading. Um, so fading, we wrote fading. Well, I wrote Fading a long time ago. I'm going to say probably when I was about 17 or 18, oh. and I'm 24 now. So it was a long time ago. Um, so it's definitely the oldest song, uh, one that we've been playing the longest. Even at live shows, we were playing it uh, in in the old band as well. Um, so just to touch on kind of what it's about, um, Fading, I, I originally wrote it as... Um, sort of a song about bullying, um, about uh, people not really understanding that uh, everybody has different lives and you don't even really know uh, what one person's life is compared to yours or whatever. And um, that we're really quick to judge people um, based off of that. Mm. And, uh, you know, some of the things that you can that you say can impact somebody tremendously more than you might know. Um but because you don't really know what they've gone through. And um, so it's definitely kept that meaning to its core, but then sort of evolved into like a suicide awareness uh, sort of song because, uh, you know, I wrote this a long time ago before we went into the studio, I kind of revamped a couple things. And um, because the, the whole record in its entirety is kind of um, touching on subjects like this, I sort of, made it more towards like the suicide prevention, suicide awareness sort of uh, aspect of it, um, which ties in with bullying as well. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, bullying has, has definitely made people do some of these crazy things. And uh, so, yeah, it's just kind of touching on like, maybe, you know, you don't know what other people have gone through. So, you know, think twice about the things that you say and, always try to try to be your best self and uh, because you don't know how it impacts others. Awesome. Definitely. And I mean, it's a, you know, I, I, I was saying to you before we started recording, I think that fading is uh, I think it's my favorite track. So I love the, the energy of it. The second it kicks in musically is very, it feels very big, you know yeah. what I mean? But then it's very, um, it really stands out from the rest of them. I think as far as like, it's almost like a more of like an up-tempo type feel, 
but then it's yeah. like, when it comes into the verse and especially the chorus, which I think my favorite, my favorite part of the whole EP to be honest with you is that chorus. I love that chorus with the thank you, you know, with the harmony vocals and stuff. I I really love that chorus. Yeah, actually the the first time we demoed that song with Mark, uh, who is the producer of our first record as as Poor Judgment. We demoed that with him and he said listen i'm not saying this he said this but he said when because it's me and riley singing at the mm -hmm. same time at the same pitch right he said our vocals mixed like that kind of sounds like adam gauntier from that little album behind you there this little album right here yeah <laughs> you know some people might know it might Maybe. be called might be one of the best albums of the 2000s i mean <laughs> maybe three days grace adam gonche so that was a huge compliment because adam is literally my idol um so listen that wasn't me i i can't personally hear it, but that's what he said but um yeah so it's an older song and it's, it's out there for people to hear now and it's such a weird thing because it's just i've wrote it so long ago man like i was still in high school which is crazy like that was i mean for I'm thinking for me, that was a, like a long, long time ago, but for you, it was yeah. a long time ago. No, it was long as me, but yeah, that's, that's cool though. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, that is a huge compliment too, to, cause he has such a head still has yes. such a unique voice that just is instantly recognizable. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. Cause I'm such yeah. a days grace fan. It <laughs> might be, <laughs> you know, I, uh, like I said, like they're one of my favorite bands and, um, their music has definitely impacted me in certain ways. And, you know, when I, when I listen to it, I can, I can kind of hear that, um, that influence in it, maybe not with like the style of music, but more with, um, some of the melodies I use, mm -hmm. um, especially that chorus. Like I could, I could kind of hear, um, three days grace playing a, a chorus like that, just very simple yet impactful and powerful. And I think that's what a lot of three days grace songs are. And that's why I think that they're such a huge band like they are. Definitely. And I think that it's funny you say that because I'm, I'm realizing now, like one of the things that, and for the record folks, this isn't me just blowing smoke. Uh, one of the things I think that draws me to you guys so much and did the first time I heard you is vocally speaking, you guys are very much in that same vein of like kind of that 2000s era kind of hard rock rock alternative metal type genre which that's my shit i love that stuff mm -hmm. like Thirty Days grace and seether and all that stuff yeah but then it's updated and you have that kind of the 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 post hardcore vibe more musically so yeah. it's like it has this really nice mix of both and i think that's one thing for me that really like i was like oh shit like these guys have got something for sure you know because it's it's not just with all due respect to some bands out there in the genre like it, it'll all kind of sound not the same but it's like you kind of know what you're getting mm -hmm. i'm not trying to be mean to anybody but like just you know what i mean like just in some genres it almost can get to a point where it's like okay yeah they're this whereas like with you guys i was kind of like there's more depth here than just that. Like there's a little more stuff going on here. Appreciate that, man. That's actually something that uh, we have been trying to work on, like kind of creating our own sound. And, um, you know, when we first started judgment, our, our goal was to actually bring back those early 2000, uh, early 2000s type songs, vibes, th that kind of stuff, because we love that stuff. A lot of people love that stuff. A lot of people miss that stuff. And, you know, when they talk about bands that made music back then that are making music now, they're like, oh, I wish, you know, that this record sounded more like the record they released yeah. in early 2000s. Yeah, right. So it's the... like, why can't, why can't we make music that sounds like that anymore? So like, I mean, yes, it has been done before, but is it happening right now? Not, not particularly. Like, I don't really see it happening, right? It's kind of like this new age. There's a lot of synth going on, um, sort of like bring me the horizon vibes or like movements or, you know, just like, it's just like that updated version, but we kind of want to make our own lane. Like I, I love the new age, like post hardcore sure, sort of absolutely. sound, but we kind of want to pave our own lane, almost mixing the two 
and, and going in our own direction and uh, paving our own path with it. So um, thank you for all the compliments, man. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, um, the thing too is like you're, I mean, I think you're doing that because that's something that as a fan of that era of music, like, I mean, that was what I grew up with. And there's, there's no, nothing like, and I've talked about this for the last five years and 300 plus episodes here on the show. Mm-hmm. There is nothing quite like a big course and like not just a hooky course, but like just big soaring vocals and stuff like that, that really came into prominence in that early 2000s for sure three days grace bands like stained like that just had those courses that were undeniably huge yes they're and, hooky like mm-hmm. pop courses but then have so much more oomph behind it you know yes yeah stuff that you can and you know once people kind of realized oh wait a minute i think dave Grohl said it once where he was like courses are supposed to be a bumper sticker and i was kind of like what he's like you know less a bitch but keep on trucking it's like <laughs> once you get like your basic thing it was almost like everyone was kind of like oh we can do that but like almost like over time it was like ah that's boring now let's add some synths in there it's like now you're kind of taken away i think it's for me too it's like it's the guitar driven big courses mm-hmm. where i'm yeah. like i'm missing that you know what i yeah. mean so that's why i think when i heard you guys i was like oh okay cool they're they were trying to bring it back, you know? <laughs> I was actually thinking of that same Dave Grohl interview when he said, like, the chorus is everything in a song. It's yeah. the thing that repeats. You hear it three, sometimes four times in a song. And if that's not good, then, I mean, chances are the rest of the song's not very good. Um, so it's a de- it's definitely, like, a huge part of making music and uh, a huge part of yeah just a huge part of music in general i guess it has to you have that's why it's called the hook because it has to hook your audience and you know if if people are casual listeners right they hang on to the chorus like yep. the verses come on everybody's mind kind of drifts off maybe they start having a conversation but as soon as that chorus hits again everybody kind of stops talking and starts singing that song singing that chorus because it's if it's hooky then people are gonna get hooked and and want to sing those lyrics no matter what they're doing right i kind of have that issue like even (laughs) driving around in the work truck or something i'm like you know having a conversation with one of my coworkers, and he's talking to me and then i hear like a chorus and i start singing it and he's like are you listening? And I was we're, like, we're trying to have a conversation, n- bro. <laughs> kind of not. <laughs> but no, yeah, I'm, it's, it's I'm a huge same. part. And huge part. there's something to be said too for when when that big distorted driven guitar kicks in into a big chorus. That is yeah. much better than anything else. Nothing like one of the best examples I've ever seen of it is when I was um I was watching a live video of Stain playing so far away. Oh. And that's an example I always use because just when the chorus kicks in, it's like, just, like it's you know, this huge chord that might hit and then that's Aaron a, starts singing it, you know? Dude, that's a song that has some bang and verses though. Mm-hmm. Like that, that like, oh, that like, I can't even describe it. It's like, it's just that guitar, man. That guitar, it has that like dissonant sound, like that reverb sort of going on. Mm-hmm. Like so, so sick, man. There was a live video of them playing that song live in like, I think it was like 2003. Um, and they're playing it like on TV somewhere. I can't remember where it was. And it's one of my favorite videos of a live performance ever. Cause like, I love like, I'm sure we've had the conversation before. I mean, I love Stan. I'm a huge Aaron Lewis fan. And like, yeah. and Mike Mushak, the point where I had a signature guitar, which I still did. Um, we, I'm watching this video and Mike is just kind of like hanging out, playing the, playing the verse. But when the chorus kicks in, he starts like, he does like this, like he's like doing like this weird, like head banging dance thing. Yeah. And like, it's so out of place with whatever would Cause Eric's just sitting there on a stool with his acoustic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, wait, what? Like, it might just like, Durr. the vibes don't match, it's but it's so still good. working. <laughs> so good. yeah, no, there's nothing like a big, a big hook. And for me, I mean, that's what, and, and again, because I hadn't 
heard fading second i heard it and it kicked in i was like oh shit <laughs> so. yeah it comes in with a bang like that that actually that uh intro wasn't there before and uh we had an intro into it but it w- definitely wasn't anything like that and that was actually a lot of sam's doing and he's like play that and we're like okay, okay. and then Good we call. did and <laughs> we heard it and we're like damn this is like comes in so hard and then drops off for that verse and then builds its way back up so yeah and that's the thing too right is i'm like i wasn't sure if um because like some bands like you know start of an ep they'll come in with like a nice like little uh, instrumental intro or something yeah. maybe or like a nice piano fade in or sims right and with you it was just like boom and i was like this is what i need <laughs> yeah that's what that you know what and that's who we're catering to is people that need that you know that hard rock like back into their lives you yes. know Yes, and that distortion, the game. Yes. We're bringing it back, man. Drop, scoop the mids. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. That's the one thing I want to leave in the 2000s. The, yeah. the super scoop mid tone. <laughs> 100%. Let's leave that there. But we'll bring a lot of it with us. Awesome, the future. Man. Awesome. So, yeah, that was fading, right? Um, the next one is anxiety and the fear of dot 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 what is it i forgot i forgot to keep saying that by the way (laughs) what is the fear you know um so i actually haven't talked about this before um so i was actually sitting outside with my mom and this is like years ago as well like i had to be 19 when i wrote anxiety and uh i was kind of going through it a little bit um with a sort of relationship that kind of thing but it wasn't a relationship it was just it was toxic it was is what it was but um so pretty much this this person that i had you know a long history with um on and off had you know kind of wanted me back in the situation where it had always been me kind of chasing and not getting anything from it um but now it was almost like the tables turned and she wanted to pursue something with me but there had been so much damage from the years of you know sure stuff (laughs) that uh i didn't know if i wanted it anymore so and it, it made me very anxious um i'm somebody who deals with a lot of uh, anxious tendencies. I've never been diagnosed with having anxiety or depression. So I'm not about to say any of that, but I, I'm a very anxious person at times. Um, especially when the going gets tough, when shit's a little bit stressful, I, I get pretty anxious and, um, but I've gotten better with it over the years and kind of learned how to deal with that. But there was an incidence when I was in the back and I wrote that, um, that guitar part, but the whole thing was actually on an acoustic guitar because that's usually how I write, uh, just like more clear. And I've been playing acoustic since I can remember, and I just feel more comfortable with it. Sure. Um, and I was like sitting out back and I was kind of explaining to my mom, um, this situation and, uh, you know, she went back in and then I started writing about that. So originally, I mean, the, the song was entitled anxiety and the fear of being hurt or getting hurt, something along those lines, but we decided to keep it open-ended because we want it to be like a crowd experience where it's whatever the fear that you have, you know, because it could be anything. Um, the lyrics, uh, I wrote it, I wrote them like I was talking to a person, but I was actually talking to my anxiety, um, something that's deep within me, right? Um, Which is, I guess, a newer approach. I think I've written songs like that before that have just never been released like over the years and stuff like that. But uh, it was a a newer approach, I guess, for even judgment. And um, I, I really just vibed with that. And I always think that, whenever people do that in songs, it's like an interesting thing. Cause it kind of makes you think like, cause you could be talking to a person, but 
if you really think about the words that I am saying, you can kind of be like, oh, it is, it's not a person. It's, it's You're yourself. Something with, yeah. Something within yourself or yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like the beginning line is like, so, so nice to see you. I can't tell how long it's been. I've pushed you down beneath me. Cause you're the only thing I dread. And like, that's me talking to my anxiety, yeah. you know, lately I've been content with myself, but the loneliness it gets to me. Um, I knew that you'd come back around sort of like, it's something that I've been dealing with a lot through my life. And, um, never seems to fail to come back when like stuff like that kind of happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, at that time it had been like a very long time since it would, it was happening. I was just like, I don't know, on a high, I guess, and not really having anything stressful happen to me. And then that kind of hit and I was like, Oh, all right, well, here it is again. Um, so, so yeah, it's a little bit of an interesting story, I guess, um, in regards to that. And then uh, the lyrics go on and I, I start kind of comparing uh, in the second verse, this feeling to like drowning, which I know drowning's been, you know, talked about in many songs, but the only, the only thing that I can really relate having this anxiety to is drowning, like feeling like, it, you're just like fighting so hard with yourself. And sometimes you just want to just let go, but you got to keep continuing to, you know, persevere. And like in the second verse, I talk about like sort of um, the, me parting the seas till it overflows. And when I sink down to the coral reef, I see myself pinned underneath. Please make this stop. I can hardly breathe. That's just like, kind of seeing myself in a familiar place and sinking down there and being like, you know, here I am again, sort of thing. Um, so, and then um, there is the sort of talking part, like the spoken word yeah. that I do in the bridge. And that was just something that I, I came up with one night Um just like, you know, thinking about the meaning of the song and stuff like that. And thinking about how, you know, I feel in some of those, um, in some of those instances and, you know, maybe, maybe it's because I've dealt with, you know, a lot of the hurt and stuff. And that's why I want to make music where it can kind of rid people from this sort of hurt that maybe I experienced or even worse. Right. Um, but that's something that's always been in me is just helping people. And especially through that, because I know how it makes me feel. Um, mm-hmm. so I can imagine, you know, how other people feel in that situation and maybe they can deal with it better than me and maybe they can deal with it worse than me, you know, and I, I kind of want to help those people that maybe have, have trouble dealing with it, um, to sort of boost them up and, and help them in any way that I can to sort of get them back where they want to be. Well, that's the thing too, is that's what, with the way that you wrote this song, like it's very, like you were saying, anxiety and the fear of, it's like, you know, you can, and even like the, the way that the song is performed, it's very much, I don't mean to keep bringing them up, but like Aaron Lewis from Stain once said, he's yeah. like, everything needs to be perfectly vague. Mm-hmm. And it's just like with this, it's it's just vague enough where like if you really listen, like you can probably kind of figure out what you're talking about, but it's also like you could be going through something different that you can relate to the words on. And it's like it's you know, it's a really powerful song in that sense, where it's like, you know, like you were just saying, if, if someone who's going through something similar or worse or what what have you can hear that and be kind of like, you know, Hey, that that's why I fell in love with the music I did. Cause there was stuff I was feeling that I was like, Hey, I relate to what this person's saying. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, Oh, I'm not alone. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Like, yeah. You know, and sometimes that's all someone in that situation needs. It's like, Hey, I'm not alone. What I'm feeling is other people feel too. It's like, okay. Yeah. You know? And I'm all about that sort of, uh, that relatableness about music and about lyrics, but I always try to 
shed positive light on the situation at some point in the song. And for this song, Anxiety, and for most songs that I write, the conclusion is sort of at the end of the song Mm -hmm. where like in this song, uh, I I repeat, um, this weight won't last forever. I can almost taste the air. Almost like, you know, yes, this this thing I'm going through is shitty, but, um, you know, it's not going to last forever. Like pain doesn't last forever. And that's one of the things I tell myself. Um, One way or another, the pain is going to go away, right? So, um, you know, I'm a fighter and I, I try to, you know, fight through the hard times and not only fight through the hard times, but also learn from those hard times, because I feel like if everything was just great, then nobody would learn anything, you know? Yeah. And it's a, it's a tough thing because you always want things to be great, but usually when you come out of a really shitty situation, you can take something from that to impact you and and help you grow uh, in your own life. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, you know, sometimes there is, I was, I was trying to look something up um, of a, of a quote from something, but I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase it mm-hmm. because it's kind of in line with what you're saying. Um, if you don't have, if all you have is good and happiness and stuff, sometimes it's, you have to take the sadness with the happiness because it's like there's this beautiful moment sometimes when you can realize like, Hey, the fact that something made me so happy and make me, made me feel so good that I am now feeling this sad, like, yeah, this sadness sucks. And this one I'm feeling right now sucks. But the fact that I can feel this from this happiness is a really beautiful thing. And, you know, I don't even want to say where that quote's from because it's a beautiful quote, but it's from mm-hmm. South Park. So I'm just not going to say it. <laughs> so it's a butter stotch for that quote, uh, the beautiful sadness. Yeah. Um, South Park's <laughs> weird like that though. They, they can do, they can twist some stuff up where you're like, yeah, this man. is the dumbest show. And you're like, okay, what? Like, this is actually was, life advice. Yeah, right man, that was one of the most beautiful quotes I ever heard where it was like, you have to take the, you know, it's the fact that I could, I could feel this, this, this sad about something that happened is I'm just so happy. It's like, it's like, no, it totally right? makes sense yeah. though. It totally makes sense because if you felt one way all the time, you couldn't really differentiate happy yeah. from sad. There wouldn't be any happy. You would just be neutral. Yeah. It's so the like, fact that there yeah. is that, yeah. The fact that there is that, the fact that they're sad makes it so that there is a happy and vice versa. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it kind of, it, it in the end, it weighs itself out and there's going to be super great times in your life. And there's going to be super tough times in your life. But mm-hmm. for me, whenever the tough times sort of happen, I push through and try to learn something from it every single day or, you know, when, whenever this certain situation is done, I try to pull something from it because you're not learning then you're not growing and uh, for me personal growth is such a huge thing for me and um made me who i was today you know going through everything that i've gone through and um just taking those experiences and those little lessons and implementing them into my life now and just making things you know a lot smoother Mm -hmm. sometimes in those rough situations that's it i mean the thing is too is uh, you know you never stop learning you never stop. I mean, I've been on this earth for almost 30 years now and like you never stop growing. At least you're not supposed to. There's some people yeah. I know who have stopped growing, but it's like, yeah. you want to try and like, I'm always like, okay, what can I learn from this situation? Something bad happens. Okay. I feel pretty crappy right now, but what can I learn from this? What was there something I did to, you know, could I have done something differently? Could I have approached this differently? You know, you always want to try. Exactly. It's so so important to have self-reflection and sometimes that self-reflection is nope i did nothing wrong like okay and that's okay too like yep then you got to just accept it and you know try and uh try and move on with your life but it's it's a you know it's a beautifully written song it's uh it's a badass song as far as like you know because i you know as much as i love your clean singing and stuff like that like i do love your your harsh vocals too (laughs) so yeah that was a song that uh I did the majority of the vocals on, um, on that one. I'm not sure why I just, uh, when we play it live, Riley sings the chorus, but, um, on record, 
Riley sings like there's like a sort of a back and forth thing that happens, screaming and singing. And then in the first verse, there's like screaming overlapped with the singing. That's Riley and myself. Um, but yeah, I just I really wanted to sing that chorus for whatever reason. I just just felt like it, man. Oh, I guess, I guess <laughs> so. it's because it's, it's so personal to you, too. Right. Like it's. Yeah. You know, that was well in one way or another all these songs are 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 pretty personal to me um because you know i the, i have felt maybe not felt these things but i have thought about these things at one at one point right like the this is like a journey into my mind pretty much like this whole record is just like the things that i think about like my mind never stops thinking about music for one but it also just never stops going period so there's some things where i some things i need to get off my chest even like uh and some things where i'm like uh, this is such a different scenario that i've never been through but i can only imagine how it feels to to be feeling like this and then you know usually i do my research when i am talking about things that maybe i haven't experienced or haven't experienced in full mm -hmm. um just to educate myself because i wouldn't want to like write about something that i i know nothing about you know so I'm talking be, to people and researching and it'd be disingenuous too right like and that's yeah, not even sure. remotely you know who you are at all so like you're yeah. not gonna be like oh, i'm singing about this and it's like oh what's this about i don't know i wrote it about this thing i guess you know like you can exactly. always tell when someone's being disingenuous right so, yeah so yeah i mean there's the two first songs and so i mean uh the next song is terra firma if i'm not mistaken yes yeah um so i think terra firma and um define alive have a pretty similar meeting so i'll kind of knock them both out at once here um something that we really stand for in this band is personal growth and in personal growth um there is a struggle of maybe listening to the wrong people or being guided a certain direction where you you know you don't even really want to be but you're you are that person and as a result of your parents making you that person or your friend group that you surround yourself with um both of these songs are pretty much um they're pretty much songs about being who you are and creating your own path um which is, is something i think is super huge um there are certain types of people in the world you know um but i i ultimately think that we would all be better off if we lived our lives like they were the only ones that we're ever going to have and regardless of what you believe or what i believe right like i i was raised religious and i still am religious um but other members of my band are not religious but um i, I kind of wrote uh, especially terra firma about like living this life like it's your, the only one you, you you got you know what i mean um, because regardless of what you think, nobody knows and nobody ever will know what happens. Right. Truly, so, yeah. uh, so in my mind, that's how I live my life or I try to at least. And there's sometimes where I kind of fall off and I kind of forget. Um, but there are, you know, some time where it kind of, I get reminded that this could, this could be it, man. This could uh, any day, any day mm -hmm. could be the last. So pretty much live your life to the fullest. And um, it's okay to take in information. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to learn from other people. But ultimately, you should learn through your own experience, I think, in my opinion. Because oh, for sure. you, don't, you don't really know until you do it. So, you know, you could meet somebody or I could meet somebody who's a musician and said, hey, it's a it's a waste of time man just quit while you're ahead it's so hard like and i could be like yeah you know what like you're probably right like i could see how it's hard so maybe i'll do something else I'm like no i'm not that type of person like if i want to do it it's it's getting done or it's damn well you know near getting done it, try if, if i can help yeah. it yeah if i can help it it's gonna get done right so 
Um, that's kind of what both of those songs are about, I think. Um, but again, I, I try to write sort of open-ended where you could relate either of those songs or any one of the songs on the EP to whatever you um, identify with or can relate to. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something too, that like, I, I, I've talked about a lot on the podcast, especially this last year, like there's, you have to just go for it, with whatever you want to do. Like, don't second guess yourself to, Oh, well, this person said I shouldn't do it because they tried to. And it's like, just go for it. If there's something you want to do, you know, especially when it comes to creativity, like if there's something you want to do for yourself and for fun, do it 100% go for it. Who cares if, you know, I, I know some streamers who like, you know, they, they do it just because they enjoy doing it. You know, See, those that, types of things you know, will make you feel good. Yes. Like they will, the serotonin in your body will just skyrocket. Yeah. Like, it will make you feel so good. And even if you don't achieve those things years after you will feel that serotonin and, and you will say, thank God or whatever. Thank, thank goodness. Thank that them, I, whoever, thank whatever. whoever <laughs> that I did this because if I didn't, I would severely, severely regret it. And yeah, you know, when you're old, you're old. You can't, when you're 80 years old, you can't go, you know, do a lot of the things that you, you want to do when you're young. So, um, I watch a lot of Gary V and there's, there's one thing that he says is that if you want to, uh, you know, it, it's something along the lines of to live life without regret. And if you don't believe them, then go for a day into an old age home and talk to the people around because especially back in that time, it was a lot of, you have to do this or you're not going to survive. You got to do this yeah. or you won't be successful. And a lot of those people will have a lot of regrets and say, you know what? The only thing that I regret is this time where I didn't I need do, to try this. And do this or whatever. Yeah. Right. And I never want to be like that. Like I, I just, I want to do everything that I want to do to the fullest of extents possible. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I try to push. And some people, um, you know, think that it is possible. And some people are like, no, that's not possible. Like, and that's okay. Because the, like I said, there are certain people in this world and, um, that's the different types of personality and stuff like that. And, and that's okay. And it's not for you. If, if it's not for you, it's not for you, but I'm trying to speak to, at least with these songs, the people who feel stuck and feel like they don't have an out, uh, speaking to them and saying, you're never really stuck. You can yeah. figure something out. Like there is an alternative. You might have to search deep. You might have to make sacrifices. You might have to take steps back, you know, go backwards a little bit. And that's a very scary thing. A lot of that, that stuff is, is very scary to do, but if you want happiness, then I strongly advise you to make those steps so that you can make things happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it is a, you know, fear of failure can hold people back a lot from things they want to try and do. And it's like, at the end of the day, you just, you have to do it for you. And regardless of what happens, if you do that, you are a success in my eyes. So that's it, man. And it's hundred percent, man. It's a beautiful way to think and to live your life and. You know, I mean, you know how much I love, <laughs> I love Tara Ferber and Divine Lives. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, those, those songs in particular are kind of like what our band stands for, I think, um, in just like personal growth, like our, our motto is we'll grow together because just because I write these songs or whatever, like I'm no better than anybody and I, you're no better than me. You know, like I believe that everybody is on equal playing field. Nobody's better than the next person, you know? So if we can all come together and unify and, you know, become this movement, which is what we've been trying to do in judgment is create this, this very open, free acceptance and movement where um, people aren't scared anymore. People can just live the lives that they want to and not be afraid of judgment. 
right? And that's why. He our said it. He right said now. it. <laughs> that is why our name is Judgment, though. You know, it all ties in. Um, it's kind of an oxymoron sort of thing, but yeah. Um, so the last song is November, which you were saying before that is one of your favorite tracks. Yeah, that's definitely for sure one of my favorites. And I mean, it. The I, I have to say this real quick because one of the things that is like now it's kind of like it's kind of funny isn't the right word but i loved the song before and how beautiful and deep the song is and how much meaning it has behind it which obviously you're going to get into but for me um again some people might hear this and be like dude seriously but it's like i can't help it it is what it is um the last time i had you was the last time i had you on when you and Cameron were on, I think that was the last time I had you guys on. I think so. That yeah, was yeah. November. And yeah, yeah. literally, I think it was like two or three days afterwards, my my one cat who I've had forever, and he's like, was my best friend, passed away. And yeah, the my song I was obsessed with at that point was November. So now, no matter what I do, anytime mm. I hear November, I can't help, but it has this it has this really special place in my heart now, just like that episode does. Cause it's just yeah. like, it was with you guys. It was a lot of fun, but yeah. also it's like, you know, it, and it's this weird coalition thing where like, I'm very much, there are certain songs I'll hear even to this day from when I was like, from like 15, 16 years ago. And it'll take me right back to that feeling. And, yep. you know, you know, I've, I've seen this to Sam the other day and she's like, um, my fiance Sam, and she's like, I mean, she's like, it's a beautiful song and everything, but she's like, isn't it? It's just like, oh yes, this reminds you of my cat. It's, it's like, yeah. wait, what? Like, yeah, but some people know might what, hear man. that and be like, you know, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, pets are a whole different ball game. But yeah. fucking, the pets are your family, you know. Yeah. Regardless if it's your dog or your cat or your snake or your hamster, you know what I mean? Your cricket, people, whatever. People have. um people can feel whatever they want exactly. to things right so like a, a long time ago you know a couple of my brother's uh snakes or lizards uh passed away and he was like crying and he was very upset and i was yeah. like i was like i i don't understand it because i never felt that way about a snake or something but mm -hmm. put it to put it in perspective it's just like another pet man it's like yeah. something that you cherish and that you take care of every day and now it's gone so mm -hmm. that's a really sad thing um yeah. to touch on like the whole how music can kind of trigger feelings or times in your life that's always been such a such a weird thing to me and how i can hear a song that i have not heard in 10 years and it comes on and you know every word to it yeah. and you can actually close your eyes and remember a certain moment and you can like picture everything going on and just like the feelings or just the where you were in that situation and when that song was playing it's it's so like it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing man because time goes on and things like just come and go and you know once it happens it's gone forever right but music can actually like bring back those visuals of actually being in that time it's just like such a crazy crazy thing um it really is so i mean uh obviously i'm like super sorry that your cat died um but i am pretty honored that november is like a song that you now have like a like connection There's like emotionally attachment with. to it yeah yeah it's it i don't know how else to say it other than like it's very humbling to hear that so i mean like i said too like it was you know it was such a it's such a beautiful song with such a deep meaning that like i was already playing it on repeat because i just loved the song and then it was yeah. just like and you know i have that with random songs that like people are like wait like what there's yeah. a song i have that like i always say this to sam like oh this song reminds you of you and she's like seriously i'm like yeah like <laughs> it's all yeah but it could song, not even you know? be <laughs> Like, it's not even like a lot of the times it's not the lyrics that remind exactly. you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, because as we're going to get into November is not about a, a cat passing not even away. Remotely. Right. <laughs> but it's like, it doesn't matter. Like yeah. those, it just triggers like, 
it could be just even the feeling of the song, this sort of like push and pull of like this sort of like beautiful side to it. And this sort of sad side and the angry side of like all these different emotions, like flowing throughout the song that had, had something to do with it, you know, mm-hmm. but exactly. Right. So November is about, uh, I wrote it about domestic violence and though I've never been in a domestic, you know, violence relationship. Um, I know a lot of people who have, and I also, you can also relate it to just like a bad relationship that you've had. So, so I kind of took some of the feelings of like that, this very toxic relationship sort of deal that I had before, but then I also um, talked to some people about, you know, their, their domestic relationships and stuff like that, people that I know. And then I also did a bunch of research online, um, watched a lot of videos, read a lot of articles about people talking about um, their experiences, their feelings, um, even some quotes that they even said, I obviously plagiarism, but like, I kind of twisted some things. And, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And whatever, but you didn't just blatantly copy and paste. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it was just like the, the feeling of being in that type of relationship is something that um, if you have never been in that type of relationship, you can never fathom because it's so, it's so insane. And that's something that I learned, uh, from doing like all this research. And so, yeah, I wanted to write a song about that. And, you know, there's obviously the song face down by red jumpsuit apparatus, which kind of is a song about domestic violence and stuff like that. But I kind of wanted to write it in a perspective of, the the victim right uh which could be a touchy subject because i personally am not a victim but i'm just i'm i'm not saying that i am i'm just writing it in a perspective of the victim because of all the information and all the feelings that um other people have told me that is how they felt and i'm not doing this for me i'm doing this for the audience and the people who need it and that's literally just like the whole record is what is what that is we're doing this for other people because we love music that changes us and touches our hearts and makes us think about things or learn things or you know gets us through different things so that's the kind of band we want to be Mm -hmm. um we went into the studio with this one and i didn't really i had the i had the chorus i had the chorus like before anything really i had the melody and all that stuff and i didn't really i didn't really have anything else we had like all the instrumentals that we've been playing for such a long time but i wanted to make this song worth making because i didn't want to make it and not do this very tragic um situation justice you know what i mean you want to make sure it was as great exactly as i wasn't i wasn't going to like i literally said in the studio if this isn't if if we're not happy with this we're not releasing it and we're just yeah. putting out a four track um which not a lot of people know about as well but um the one day it was our last day in the studio and we recorded all the uh all the instrumentals to it and everything and we were on our way there and I asked Cameron uh, as well, like Cameron's the basis of our band um, because he writes a lot of poetry and stuff. So I kind of sent him like a bunch of links and I was like, listen, if you have any ideas, shoot them my way and then I'll kind of like break everything up and, and write it. So he did that and that helped me out a lot. So before we went to the studio, we were sitting in this coffee shop it was called rise like r i s e um coffee and or cafe rise cafe in uh toronto super sick place um really good coffee charge to rise yeah straight <laughs> to rise um so we were sitting in there and i had my headphones in while they were having their coffee and i was like i'm i'm getting this i'm writing this all out right now so i just put the uh instrumentals on repeat and just went ham. And in about 20 minutes, 
I took my headphones out and I was like, it's done. And they're like, what? And I was like, it's done. Like I finally got everything out. Like, and, and I really love it. And they're like, well, let's see. And then they all looked at it and they're like, this is insane. So we brought into the studio when we showed Sam who knew that we weren't going to release this unless it was good. So we also had his opinion too. Sure. And he was like, I don't even understand how you did this in 20 minutes. And it was like, yes, I wrote it in 20 minutes, but it had been like months of me. It's been researching in and there like, for months. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I've had, I had ideas and stuff like that, but I think when, when Cam kind of helped me out that little bit, it kind of gave me that push in like which direction to go. And yeah, it kind of just made me spill everything. And that's honestly, that's usually how I write my songs is like, I'll start off with the concept and we'll have all the music. And then like, cause I don't write daily and stuff. I know people that just write every day and just they'll keep some songs or, and and throw some songs away. But for me, it's like, I don't write unless I'm like now, like this is it right now. Mm -hmm. And I will write a song in like 20 minutes, half an hour. And then it'll, sometimes it'll take time where I'll just listen to it on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. And I'm talking about repeat and I'm talking about for days and days and days. And then I'll switch stuff until I'm like, okay, this is good. But automatically that song just felt really good. Um, and everybody else felt the same. So, you know, I hope I, I hope I did the situation justice and I, I hope that um, people receive it well. And uh, from, you know, this was a single uh, from last year and honestly got a lot of good, like really good um, Dude, messages yeah. back. And from people who have actually, been through that situation um which is like insane to hear from them but like they said like this either like this helped me or you did an amazing job you on put, this yeah you put words to some feelings, to feelings. You know? exactly um so you know it might not be for everybody but uh you know to the people that actually um that actually I don't know the word I'm looking for right now, but the, the people that appreciate it, I'll mm -hmm. say that people that appreciate it. Um, I appreciate that. And like, I, I personally haven't gotten any, um, bad vibes or, or bad comments about it, which is like really cool for me. Cause that is something that I did worry about because mm -hmm. obviously I wasn't in that situation, but I wanted to try to do something different, something outside of the box, something that, no, not, not a lot of people have done before. And that's like right from another perspective, but uh, yeah, I hope that it was like perceived well and it, it seems to be um, that way. So definitely that's a song that, you know, like right away, the second I heard it, I was like, okay, this is a beautiful, deep song. And, you know, there is from what I saw, as far as just a fan, like, the comments and stuff like that. Like it's one of those songs that just, it was so well received. And I mean, I'm, you know, I'm glad that you decided to release it. Cause I mean, you know, I would understand if you were like, I don't know, like, yeah, it, it, I totally get it. Cause it's like, it is a very, it could, if it wasn't such a great, well-written song. Um, I mean, I absolutely understand how it could be like, you might have some doubts about it for sure. Yeah yeah but uh you know fortunately it, we we got it to that point and I, I mean we're super happy about it um we're super happy that this record is out that people are actually listening um we've been getting some very very good comments on uh the music the songwriting the production and uh you know it's just really humbling to hear that people are it's being received well and uh that people are enjoying listening to it. And um, there is, there's tons more to come. Uh, I kind of call this, this record the beginning because I feel like everything up to this point was just like prep for what's to come. In my opinion, 
um, that is what it is. Like, this is just the beginning of, of everything we've, we've experienced, you know, different members of the band. Like I'm talking when we are in poor judgment to finding our, our core and which it just happens to be this group of best friends that, you know, grew up together from, from elementary school. And then we started playing shows and experiencing bombing on stage and having the best shows of our life and having, you know, one person in the crowd to having 400 people in the crowd and like these different sort of experiences throughout, um, you know, going on tour, experiencing losing money on our first tour and then making money on our second tour and like just learning how to even deal with bands or bookers or uh, sound uh, engineers, like whatever it may be. And, and now, now that this record's out and whatever happens from this point on, this is just the beginning of judgment. And this is the beginning of our journey from now. Hell yeah, man. And I think it is a, it's a wonderful first step, so to speak in the journey. I mean, I'm excited to, you know, to watch you guys progress and eventually new music and stuff like that. And hopefully I can uh, get to see a show maybe sometime soon. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but man, I'm well, excited to watch the journey, man. We do have some shows booked, but you know, it's just the world right now. And sure. don't we'll, want to get we'll, too, we'll too. see what goes on, but <laughs> you know, I'll drop, you know, maybe September, maybe October, and then maybe March of next year. Okay. That's, that's what we got going so far. And, um, you know, we're just so excited to, to play live again. And, um, you know, I, I dropped the rhythm guitar and Lee's playing rhythm guitar now. And we haven't played a live show where I just am only singing vocals, yeah. which I'm so excited for whenever that happens. Um, you know, I've been practicing my mic swings and, you know, Doing like the toilet it around and stuff, <laughs> throwing it in the air and shit. Yeah. Just like, I, I, I want to, you know, have music that impacts people and changes people and, you know, makes people learn and, and think about different aspects of their life. But that live show, I want it to be the best live show that anybody's ever been to. So if that means I got, I'm jumping in the crowd and screaming with everybody or doing some crazy shit on stage, that's what I want to do. And, you know, that's what I will be doing <laughs> whenever it happens. So pretty excited for that. Uh, well, I'm excited. I'm excited about everything. You know how much I, I think of you and the guys in the band. So I'm, uh, I'm thrilled that you guys are, you know, going to keep, uh, keep plugging away. I know it's been a long year, but I think we're hopefully seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And always remember folks that uh, even if you're in some rocky seas, there may be smooth seas ahead. There you go. That's it. That's the <laughs> lesson for today, folks. <laughs> um, so yeah, man. Um, uh, I, I, are we wrapping up now? Cause I got, I got some plugs. I got, okay, plugs. please, by all means, let's, let's, uh, let's get these plugs in before we take. Yeah. I mean, here. we got to, you know, follow us on Instagram. That's like, you know, our main home, which is at judgment CA. You can follow us on Twitter as well at judgment CA. Uh, go check out our website. Uh, Cameron is, I'm pretty sure it's like done, done now, which is super cool. Um, our bassist Cameron is a web designer and he put his heart and soul into it. So it would mean the world to him and us if you went and checked it out and that's judgment CA band. Oh God. I don't I'll even know. I'll double check real quick. I'll double check real quick. <laughs> judgment dot. Oh, come on. Where's, where is it? It might be judgment band CA, but I think it's judgment CA band. Why is my thing? Judgment ca band yeah see what comes up see what comes up <laughs> you might have to cut this out <laughs> there we go that's it you were right okay that looks so, beautiful even on mobile yes okay great. so judgment ca band um cameron put his heart and soul into it go check it out that would mean the world to us and while you're on there, we just dropped some new merch. Uh, we have old merch still. 
Um, the, the new shirts are 15 bucks. Uh, they're pretty sick. Honestly, these might be our, my favorite shirts that we've ever made. Uh, we got a, like a picture of somebody jumping off the stage when we were playing on the back of it. Um, just like super like post hardcore vibes. And if you guys fuck with that, then definitely go grab yourself one. We got some long sleeves there and we have some, uh, some older judgment. It was like the first merch we made as judgment, uh, on there as well. So yeah, I think that's it. Other than that, stream the record, uh, define a live wherever you can, uh, Spotify, Apple music, YouTube, whatever. Um, We'll see. Might be another music video coming. Might not be. It just depends what de- depends what the people want. So we're doing a lot of that lately. It's just listening to what our fans want and giving it to them accordingly instead of kind of jumping the gun and putting out stuff that people don't want. So if you want something from us, let us know. And chances are we're going to make it happen. They so. will listen. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. Again, go stream the EP. It is awesome. Check out the website. Judgment deserve your support. I wholeheartedly, you know, cannot say enough great things about uh, about Judgment. So, Ev, thank you so very much for coming on, my man. It is always a pleasure. Thanks, DJ. Guys, there you have it. My chat with Ev Gallows from Judgment on the here on the Hard Show Music Showcase, talking all about his band's brand new EP, Define Alive. I hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. That was a lot of fun. It's always a blast getting to talk with Ev, man. He's such a, a great storyteller and always so candid and just very o- open to talk about anything. And uh, it's really important what they're doing, the movement of what Judgment's doing. So be sure to go check them out. I'll have the links down below to their website and everything. So be sure to check them out they very much deserve your support and gentlemen i very much appreciate your support as well and i appreciate your support you right now watching or listening thank you so very much be sure to hit that subscribe button or follow button depending on how you are listening or watching this leave a like or dislike if you can like obviously if you enjoy this episode dislike if you think i suck either way i very much appreciate it if you are listening on the apple podcast app be sure to leave me a rating if you can and if you haven't yet I seriously appreciate it because that helps me climb up the Apple podcast charts. My goal for this year was to get into the top 40 music podcast category in Canada. Again, I did it once before and that was kind of sort of before I knew that existed. (laughs) So uh, it would really mean the world to me if I could make, if we could uh, make that happen again, but I need your guys help. So be sure to listen on the Apple podcast app if you can and leave a rating if you can. I so very much appreciate it thank you so very very much and just thank you very much for tuning in thank you very much for following the hotter show on social medias we have facebook instagram and twitter if you would like to be on the show if you got something you want to talk about be sure to hit me up at the hotter show at gmail.com and we will uh we will set something up here i am getting ready to move as you guys could probably tell from the moving boxes back here we are in crunch time as i am recording this and uh once i am all moved in I don't know what my podcast space is going to look like, but I'll be booking people for conversations once again. So very much looking forward to that. But you got one more episode in this, uh, in this room, and then that's going to be it probably. I'm pretty sure anyway, <laughs> that's going to be it. So we will have to, uh, have to wait and see what happens. Anyway, thank you guys so very much, and I will catch you next time on The Harder Show. Take it easy, guys.